Hello everyone, Phoenix Knight here. Welcome to the channel, and welcome to a new playthrough on the channel. After a quick detour from the Cthulhu Mythos last week to defend Gravehold from the Nameless, we're going to step back into the Mythos this week as we, we play Cthulhu Death May Die from Simon Games. As we saw when we played this game for the first time last October, similar to the Arkham Horror Files, we're playing Investigators again. Unlike in the Arkham Horror Files, though, this time we're looking to punch the Ancient One in the mouth. We win by disrupting the ritual and then defeating the Ancient One that we're playing against. We lose, and we lose if, when, if before the, the Ancient One awakens, we have anybody die. Or after the Ancient One die, after the Ancient One wakes up, if we all die, then we lose. So that's the, kind of the long and short of what we're up against there. Anyway, this week we're going to play the first scenario once again, Blasphemous Alchemy. Unlike last time, however, we're going to change the Ancient One we're up against. Back in October, we barely won this scenario against Cthulhu. This week's run will see us taking on our nemesis from the Winter Campaign. With that, let's go meet Haster. Alright, so here's a look at our storyboard for today's scenario. We've got Haster up there on the summoning track. So as we move along the summoning track, the Mythos cards will occasionally have this symbol on it. Every three will advance Haster one space along the track. Once he hits this space on the track, he will he'll come onto the board. But if we haven't disrupted the ritual yet, we won't be able to attack him. If he gets all the way to this space on the track, then we lose the game. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a quick look at Has at our first stage of Haster. So you can see there are four stages to him. We'll go through each stage individually as we get to them. But when Haster advances, you gain a yellow sign token. Summon one Haster disciple at the nearest gate and one cultist at each of the other gates. So we'll see where everything is when we move over to the board. But take a quick, we'll bring it in nice and close. But there's Haster's mini. I haven't really bothered painting the minis just because I have so many of the things to paint. But one of these days I will have to go through and paint all of those. But anyway, let's take a look at the monsters that we're going to be fighting against as well. So we have the cultist has two health. They worship Haster and they attack us in the... What phase is it? Oh yes, in the third phase of the turn with two green dice. Then the Haster Disciples also have two health and attack with three green dice. And if we deal any wounds, we either have to take a yellow sign or summon a cultist in this space, but it doesn't attack this turn. So yellow sign tokens are generally considered to be very bad, especially with the Mythos cards. But anyway, we also have the Fire Vampire and the Bayaki out. So the Fire Vampires have four health each, attack with a green and two black dice, when they attack, we first place a fire token on its space. Then the Bayaki attacks with two green and a black die. And when it attacks, each Elder Sign also counts as a success. So if we're not careful, we can get ripped apart by the Bayaki very quickly. But anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at our scenario, just to refresh our memory on how that works. On the flavor text, we'll go through how to disrupt the ritual, what happens when the Elder One advances, and the special episode actions that we have. What's worse than cultists? Cultists who set the place on fire. Another knight and another damn ritual to summon an elder god. If we blow up their labs, we can cause a lot of trouble for whatever it is they are summoning. In order to disrupt the ritual, we have to destroy four of the labs by dealing four or more total wounds to them with the destroy equipment action. And when the elder one advances, we place one fire token in each space that has a cultist and no fire. To extinguish a fire, we make a roll. Remove one fire token in your space per success. Then destroy equipment. Make a roll against a lab in your space and it's not an attack. Each success deals one wound to the lab. When a lab has four or more wounds, destroy it and turn over the lab token to reveal its effect. So we'll put that, that side up. Now, we're going to also play today with a very interesting house rule. So if you remember the winter campaign, we heeded the warning about not speaking Haster's name and that would have translated to our investigators taking one horror every time they did that. Unfortunately, we wrapped the winter campaign early due to the house rule on trauma. Today, we're going to play with that same house rule, but with a twist. 
Because in this game we somewhat do want to lose our sanity, which will make us stronger, there would be a temptation to exploit this, so I'm going to limit it to once per round. Anyway, what will happen is that the investigator who speaks Haster's name will take one sanity, so... Say it's during our first investigator's turn and I utter Haster's name. That investigator will take the sanity. But anyway, that rule won't be active until we drop down and start into our first turn of the game. So, with that, let's go meet our investigators. Here's our first investigator, Tina. She was also part of the team when we played this game in October. There's a quick look at her mini, once it focuses. There we go. She'll be doing everything with red today. So the red standee, the red base, red tentacle tokens, all that. So we'll go through each investigator individually, but I do want to talk a little bit about the tracks that we have on here. So at the top we have our sanity track, once again. The red markers are for our disorder, so when we stop there, so when we get to those markers, also if we take any excess sanity to get to that point, so say we're at... Say we're here and we take four sanity on a roll for whatever reason. We go to the next marker and we stop. Then the disorder goes off and we get to strengthen one of these abilities. And then you can also note, you might also notice here that some of the sanity markers have extra dice. So that will add to your default roll. You'll always start off with, you'll always start off with three black dice, which have sanity token which have san sanity marking on them so that's a way we can advance down the sanity track we also have one elder sign token on here unless you have a specific skill which i'll go through when we get to them the elder signs don't normally count as successes but anyway we also have our stress track here so st the way stress works in this game is you can spend that to re-roll and to re-roll one die per stress you spend we have up to four stress that we can spend. Then we've got our wound track at the bottom, where we can take up to five. We can take up to four wounds, and then the fifth wound we die. And if the ancient one is already awake, we don't lose the game. But if he's not awake yet, we do lose the game. So that's just something to be aware of. Anyway, let's take a look at Tina's special ability. We have fem at the top. We have Femme Fatale as her unique ability. Once per roll, before rolling dice. You may take one wound to gain a green die at level one. Instead, she gains two green dice. That's at level two. Level three, either gain two green dice or remove one wound or remove one die, your choice. Then level four, fully leveled up. Instead of taking one wound for your ability, give that wound to any figure on your space. Next up we have next up is one of the shared abilities, we have stealth. So current incarnation, when you run, you may sneak once, one enemy doesn't follow you. Instead, when you run, you may sneak three times. Then at level three, deal one wound to each enemy you sneak past. And instead, you may sneak any number of times, presumably dealing a wound to each enemy you sneak past as well. Then we have brawling. Gain a green die when attacking and targeting your space for level one. Level 2, when you attack, you may target any number of figures in your space, split the wounds as you like. Then level 3, you have two free rerolls when attacking a target in your space. And then level 4, when you attack, deal the full wounds, when you attack tar figures in your space, deal the full wounds to each target. So Tina, we definitely want to be doing melee things with her. But, let's take a look at her sand editor disorder. So this will go off when we get to the red markers on Tina's sanity track, Tina today has a fear of crowds. She takes one stress for every other figure in your space, enemy or investigator, but if she's alone, she gets to heal all of her stress. So we, so we do want to be punching things, but we also want to keep her space clear if we can. Anyway, that will do it for Tina. Now let's go meet our second investigator. Before we meet our second investigator, I forgot to mention a couple of things. So Tina's flavor text, I don't go looking for trouble. It finds me without any help. And then something I'll mention now before we meet our second investigator, each of our cards has what are called discovery cards on either side of the, of the player tray, I guess we'll call it. 
So when we draw discovery cards over the course of the game, we'll put those on either side depending on which side we claim, and we'll go through that in more detail when we actually get a discovery card. Now for our second investigator, we have Fleur. First, her flavor text. The Great War saw more action, so I thought it was less, though it was less horrific. She'll be doing everything with green, so we'll take a look at her mini. And then she'll move over to the map and join Tina. Okay, then for her, for her abilities, first up we have Combat Medic. At level 1, when you rest, you may divide the healing among investigators in your space. Level 2, when you rest, heal an additional 2 stress or health to a total of 5. When you rest, deal 2 wounds to an enemy within 1 space. And then instead, deal 2 wounds to all enemies within 1 space. Then we have Marksman, which is basically, which is kind of oversimplistic to call it reverse brawling, but Marksman at level 1, you may attack a target one space away. Then you gain a two green dice when attacking a target not in your space at level 2. Level 3, you may attack a target one additional space away for two total. And then at level 4, you may perform one free attack per turn against a target not in your space. And we've gone through stealth already, I won't go through that again, but anyway, that will do it for Fleur, except for her Disorder, which will go off once again at the red symbols. So Fleur's Disorder... The Short-Term Memory Loss. If you're at full stress, heal all of your stress and discard one Discovery card of your choice. If you are not at full stress, take one stress. So I guess what I'm getting out of that is I kind of want to get Fleur up to one stress and keep her there. So I don't have to discard any discovery cards, but I'm getting a little ahead of myself. That will do it for Fleur. Now let's go meet our third investigator. Here's our third investigator, Al. It's basically Al Capone from the looks of it, but anyway. There's his mini. He'll be doing everything with purple. See if I can push that down just a little bit. Okay. All right, so Al's special ability, we have connected. Level, at level one, you gain a green die if you're in the same space as a cultist. Level two, you may sneak past cultists. They never follow you. Level three, gain an additional green die if you're in the same space as a cultist. And then level four, cultists can't attack you and other investigators in your space. So basically, Al, we turn to Al when we need to deal with cultists. And he's, his shared abilities are Marksman, which we went through with Fleur, and Swiftness, which... We actually haven't gone through Swiftness yet. I thought we had for some reason. But anyway. Swiftness at level 1. When you run, you may move one additional space. Level 2, you have one free run action each turn. During a run, you may take one investigator with you when leaving a space. And then 4, you have one extra action each turn. Al's Disorder. Psychotic Outbreaks. Move to the nearest fig space with at least one figure. If your space has other figures, don't move. Then deal two wounds to all other figures in your space. So if we're careful with that, we can use it to clear out a lot of enemies in a hurry. But anyway, that will do it for Al. Now let's go meet our last investigator. Here's our last investigator, Ernest, which basically looks like Ernest Hemingway. Uh, we forgot to go through Al's flavor text, I'll do that in a second, but there's his mini. We'll move him over to the map as well. Al's flavor text real quick. I let him think the scars from some mook that, smashed me in, that slashed me in Brooklyn. So, yeah. Then Ernest's flavor text. Don't tell me I'm here. I'll ask myself for copies of my future work. Seems a little out there, but whatever. Nothing we can do there. Anyway, for special abilities, first we have Demon Hunter. You get two free rerolls when attacking monsters at level one. Level two, you may take one wound to make a free attack against a monster. Then level three, gain, green, gain a green die when attacking monsters. And at level four, other investigators within one space gain this skill at level three. So... As long as you're in one, one space of Ernest at level 4 Demon Hunter, they get Demon Hunter level 3. So get the green die when attacking monsters. We've gone through Marksman already with both Fleur and Al, and we'll take a look at Arcane Mastery. When making any roll, 
you may count one elder sign as a success. Instead, you may count any number of elder signs as successes. Level three, heal one stress for each elder sign you roll. And at level four, you may count any number of elder signs as two successes each. Oh my. So I mentioned how these, how the dice have elder sign markers on them. So normally, once it focuses, there we go. Normally the elder sign wouldn't count as a success. With arcane mastery, it does. That'll be even more important on the green dice because we have a couple of spaces with elder signs on them, but anyway. So Ernest's, Ernest's Disorder. Is Obsessive Disorder. Move your stress to match your health value. Then discard discovery cards as needed until you have the same number of cards on each side of your investigator board. So we want to get Ernest a balance of discovery cards in a tearing hurry. But that might be a little bit of a challenge to do. We'll have to see how we can manage that. But anyway, that will do it for our investigators. I think we're ready to get this game started. So our, our house rule is going to be active at this point. So we'll drop, we'll move over to the board and we'll get started with Tina. Here we are with Tina. Once again, she's in the red mini. It might be a little hard to see in the shot, but that is our starting space. Now I'm starting to see one of my main gripes that I have with a lot of these Simon games is once you start getting a lot of figures on the tiles, they can get very crowded in a hurry. But anyway, we'll have to do our best to deal with that. Anyway, a turn in Death May Die proceeds basically in like four phases. So first up we have the action phase for each investigator where you take three actions. So it's, you can run, which moves move to three spaces, attack one enemy, rest if you're safe, which will heal, let you heal three stress or health. You can trade or you can tr do any of the episode actions, which right now we don't need to. But anyway, action one for Tina, she's going to move into this space for run one. Uh, then she's going to... I think she's actually just going to stop there and we're going to start trying to deal with these cultists. So action two, we're going to deal with one of the cultists. We're going to attack one of the cultists, so we get the... We get three black dice on a default roll. And then because of brawling, we actually get to add a green die to, to the roll. So the green dice actually have elder sign and a success with an elder sign. The quest, the exclamation marks are your successes in this game. So, right. We'll go ahead and give that our first roll a go here. And we get three Elder Signs, which is a pretty rubbish roll against one of these cultists. Action th mm. Yeah, I think action three, we'll run it back. Tina's not going to be doing well with the fear of crowds already. All right, that time it's hidden, but we do get to take one of the cultists out. So we do get to deal with that. And then that's all three of Tina's actions, so she draws a Mythos card. She draws... Oh Joy, Big Yellow, Big Ugly Disciple. So it does have the symbol on it. We don't have any disciples on the board to move two spaces toward us. And then we summon a disciple at the Yellow Gate. So there's the mini of the Yellow Disciple. And then we do get attacked because Tina is on a space with a cultist, so... So the cultist, as we saw earlier, attacked with two green dice, which is already inside the dice cup. And Tina takes one wound. We can deal with that this early in the game. Anyway, that will do it for Tina. Now we'll move over to Fleur, who she's going to marksman at that cultist that's stuck with Tina right now. We need to get that thing down so we can get the rest of our team moving. 
So we'll give her the three black dice once again. Uh, we have a success, a sanity, and a an elder sign. So I'm actually going to take a stress, which will help out with her, uh, dis which will help out with her disorder anyway, and we'll re-roll the elder sign. All right, that, that's one wound which I can put on the cultist. I can deal with that. So we'll get a wound on the cultist. This is Fleur, by the way. Then we'll run the attack back for action two. Ooh. And what's our result here? Two successes and another sanity, which reminds me, I did forget to take the sanity from earlier, but the cultist is defeated. And then for action three, um, we do have stealth, so I think Fleur is going to move one, two, three, and she will pick up a fire token. So that'll be our main, that'll be our main end of turn effect on the for this scenario. There's the fire token. We'll put that on Fleur's uh, character sheet. Now, normally when you run in this game, if you pass through a space with enemies, the enemies will follow you. But because Fleur had stealth, she can she was able to sneak once, so the cultist that was on... cultist that was right here didn't follow her. Anyway, now we get a Mythos card for Fleur, we find... Suicide Pact. Each investigator with two or more yellow sign tokens takes a wound. Thankfully, we don't have any yellow signs out yet. And then we summon a cultist on the blue gate. So cultist goes right here. And then because Fleur is safe, she actually gets a discovery card. So Fleur finds... Monkey Paw. Painted glyphs on the floor. What is going on here? If you have the monkey as a companion, take two wounds and discard the monkey. You may claim the monkey paw or discard it to heal all of your health. The monkey paw lets us lets each elder sign count as both a success and a sanity, so successes now count double here. This cannot be traded, so I think Fleur will claim the monkey paw. So we'll put that on her Discovery card, uh, discovery uh, space on her left side. Move these down a little bit off camera, just so I have some room with the discovery cards. And that will do it for Fleur. Now we're into Al's turn. And Al, with Marksman, I kind of want to take advantage of that if I can. So, um, well, I think what he's going to have to do is he's going to move one, two, three. He's going to pick up a fire token as well. Oh, that reminds me. I forgot to roll for Fleur's fire token. So Al's going to pick up the fire token from Fleur, but we have to roll for that first. So fire. So we roll a, is it a black die, I think? Yeah. It's a black die per fire token, then discard them all. We take a... We'll take a wound on a success. It'll focus for me. There we go. Wound on a success. And a sanity on a tentacle. And nothing happens on the elder sign. So, we'll roll this for Fleur. Fleur will take a wound on that, but she'll discard the fire token over to Al. Then action two, he'll attack the cultist in his space. He is in the same space as a cultist, so similar to Tina's brawling, he does get a green die. Actually, I should probably be doing this in the other order, but whatever. 
Okay, success and a sanity, along with two elder signs, which don't help him at all. So we'll take a stress and try to re-roll one of these elder signs. And a success. All right, so that takes out the cultist. And then action three, we will go ahead and attack the cultist in the lab. This is why I should have done this in the other order, because now I don't have the green die to go after the cultist in the lab. That's fine. Uh, let's get that through. Oh my, we have three... Three sanity and one success. I'm actually going to take a stress to reroll one of these because I do want to try to take out the, that cultist if I can. And we don't, but at last, at least we are safe and we don't take that big a chunk of sanity right away. So we'll put, we'll put one wound on the cultist. And then we'll take two sanity, so we don't quite get to a threshold, but we do. We don't quite get to a threshold, but we come close. Anyway, that is it for Al's actions. I'll leave a black die close. Mythos card for Al, we find. Monsters in the labs. Each fire vampire and Bayaki move one space toward you, so the fire. So the Bayaki moves here. The fire vampire moves to this lab, and then we summon a fire vampire on yellow and a biaki on blue. And here's what I was talking about, where the board is actually starting to get a little bit crowded for comfort. But anyway, now we get a discovery card for Al. So we do get to investigate, we find. Fire equipment. This should come in handy. You may claim the fire extinguisher or the fire axe. The fire extinguisher gives us two green dice to extinguish fire. Or the fire axe, when attacking, gain the green die. Gain a green die if you have the brawling skill. Um, hmm. What do I think is more important, putting out fire or attacking? Ultimately, the fire is just going to keep... If you can remember the scenario from when we played this back in October... Fire is going to keep coming out no matter what. So I think I'm going to claim the fire axe on this one. With the plan of passing that off to Tina as fast as I can get it over to her. But anyway, now we have to roll for Al's fire. Nothing happens, so Al gets to discard his fire token. That will do it for Al. Ernest up last with the blue mini here. He will move. Uh, we can attack up. We can attack one space away. So he'll move one, two, three, and also pick up a fire token. Noticing a theme here. Then he will attack the cultist that is up in this lab. We've got our three black dice in here already. We'll take out the cultist in the lab. And then for action three, he'll move into the lab. With the plan of starting to work on that one next turn. Mythos card for Ernest. There's our second symbol. Naming the nameless. Each investigator rolls one black die for each yellow sign token they have. They take one wound for each success and lose one sanity for each tentacle rolled. Once again, we don't have any yellow signs out. Then we summon a cultist on yellow. But he does have to roll. He doesn't have to roll for the yellow sign, but he does have to roll for fire. All right, elder sign. Uh, elder sign actually. I think it's okay. Yeah, I don't think anything happens with that fire token on an elder sign. So we'll discard the fire token. Then we'll move back up top just to take a quick look at how the boards changed before we go into round two.
Not much has really changed on the board yet. It's kind of hard to see, but we have at least got, not, got out of the starting space. We've got Ernest poised to start working on one of the labs. Al's not far from the lab himself. Fleur is probably going to jump in as well and start kind of doing marksman detail, trying to keep this mess at bay over here. And Tina's over here. She might... Ugh. I was going to have her jump in and help out as well, but I think that's probably a bad idea. Maybe I'll send Tina down to work on this lab, but we haven't even gotten up here yet to these two labs, but that'll be a problem for later. Right now, let's get back down to the board, and it's Tina's turn. Fortunately, Tina hasn't taken any sanity yet working down her track yet, so we can send her up to the lab, up to this lab most likely without any fear of the lab, without any fear of her disorder going off. So we'll move her up for action one. One, two, three. She will pick up a fire token for moving through this space. Then action two, we'll make a roll against the lab. We're not going to use her femme fatale on this. So two black, so three black dice. And we get... How many successes? We get three successes on the lab. And we need, what did we need? Four, I think. Yep, four more wounds to destroy the lab. So let's try that again. I'm pretty sure we'll be able to destroy the lab this round. This is action three for Tina. And with one sanity, which we will take, we are able to destroy that first lab. So let's see what we find as the destroy effect on this. We find... Inferno. Place a fire token in this and each adjacent space. Oh joy. I'm sure Fleur and Ernest are thrilled with us right now. Fire, fire, fire. We'll probably have to start dousing some of that fire, but anyway... We get a Mythos card for Tina, we find. Students go mad. If you have any student companions, discard one student and summon a cultist in your space. Except we don't have any student companions, but Tina is safe, so she gets to she gets a discovery card, we find. Lab books. It's filled with a strange scrawl. Something about swapping the minds of humans and animals. Looks like nonsense. You may claim the lab notes, which gives you two green dice to all rolls if you have at least one student or animal companion, which we will claim that. So I definitely want to get a student over to Tina as fast as I can, but anyway, that will cover Tina. Fuller's turn. We'll start off by trying to ext extinguish some fire, just try to get it a little bit under control. And we have two successes, which will douse that fire. Oh, I forgot to roll, speaking of roll fire, I forgot to roll for Tina's fire once again. So that first action won't change for Fleur, but Tina's fire does a sanity to her, but she dis then she discards it. Then action two, I'll move Fleur in because sending... Because having Ernest and Tina leave that space pick up two fires does not seem like a good plan. Then action three, we'll try to extinguish the fire. And we have one success and a sanity, which I will take a stress to re-roll the Elder Sign. I'll take two sanity. Even even getting rid of one fire token is an improvement. So we'll discard that. And then we will take two sanity, which will cause that to go to her first um, her first milestone. And then Fleur's insanity goes off. So she has, as we recall, she has short-term memory loss. If she's at full stress and she's not, 
Otherwise, we take, if we're not at full stress, we take a stress. So we'll probably have Fleur resting this turn, but we'll also take Marksman for her level up ability. So Extinguish Fire, move Extinguish Fire. Okay. So that's three, that's three actions for Fleur, which means we need a Mythos card. So Fleur finds the yellow sign. If you're in the same space as Big Yellow or a Yellow Disciple, take two stress. For each stress you can't take, take a wound. If you're not in the same space, gain a yellow sign token, except Big Yellow and the Yellow Disciples aren't out yet, so nothing happens there. Then Fleur gets a discovery card because she's safe. She finds... Cages. This cage contains a one-handed lab monkey. It looks at you cunningly. If you have a guilty conscience, take one stress, which she doesn't. You may claim the lab monkey, or heal all of your stress and claim the guilty conscience, which we don't want to heal all of our stress. Guilty conscience, I should have done something, or a one-handed lab monkey. Companion animal, so we could give this to Tina. Discard this card to give one of your items to an investigator anywhere. We will claim the, the one-handed lab monkey. And I'll pass that over to Tina because that will turn her lab notes on. Anyway, that will do it for Fleur. For Al, we will we'll go ahead and attack the... Mm, actually, you know what? We're going to do this a little bit smarter. So for action one, we're going to move into the lab and take a fire. Then action two, he's going to marksman attack the Bayaki, which he can attack at one space away, so he gets a die. He gets a green die because he's in the same space as the cultist, but we're, remember, we're aiming, we're aiming at the Bayaki. So there's the green die going in. And we annihilate that Bayaki, so that thing's toast. And then for action three, we will... Uh, we'll attack the cultist in his space. And remember, we only need two health to take the cultist out. Which we get, so the cultist goes away. Actually, we only, we, I forgot we had a wound on the cultist already. So we only needed one success to take the cultist out. Then the Mythos card for Al is our third symbol, finally. The nearest fire vampire may move two spaces toward you, then place a fire token in its space. So the nearest... Oh boy, the nearest fire vampire moves two spaces toward you, so that'll move... Uh, actually, yeah, one, two, that can get to Al. Then we put a fire token in its space. And then we'd summon another fire vampire on blue, except both of our fire vampires are out already. So now we get attacked by black and two... Gr green and two black... But first we put another fire token in its space. And then we're going to be rolling for fire after this as well. We take two wounds and a sanity, which I can... Actually, I can deal with that. I'll take the two wounds and the sanity will get me to Al's threshold. So he's got the fire vampire in his space with him. He deals two wounds to that fire vampire as his disorder. So there's the two wounds. We'll put that on the fire vampire. And then we will level up... Uh, we'll level up Marksman. And then we have to roll for Al's fire. which does nothing, so that's discarded. And then that's the end of Al's turn, so Ernest will start us off 
by trying to extinguish the last fire there, so all three of them that are in that space, him, Florentina, can all leave. Three sanity and a success. So we do get to extinguish the fire, and then we'll take three sanity. Then action two, we'll actually attack the Bayaki with Marksman, and Demon Hunter trigger, so he's got two free rerolls when attacking monsters. Which will use one of those free rerolls. We may have to take some stress to try to re-roll this. Alright, there's... that. Okay, that was the first re-roll, so here's the second free re-roll. Okay, now do I want to use stress? Oh, yeah, we can use... we can use a stress. Uh, that does count as a success, so I will take two successes, which will put two wounds on the Bayaki. So there's two more wounds. And he will take one stress, which means his disorder will go off, or one sanity, which means his disorder will also go off. The only ones who hasn't gone off yet is Tina's. So he's got obsessive disorder, which means he moves his stress to match his health. Which basically brings the stress back down to his full health. Then we discard discovery cards as needed, except we have no discovery cards on either side of his board. And then we'll level up... Um, I think we're going to level up Marksman, actually. Since we know we've got some big stuff coming out. So extinguish fire for one. First, action, first attack on the Bayaki. We'll attack the Bayaki again. And this time, because we leveled up Marksman to gain two green dice when attacking a target not in your space, that'll be our roll against the uh, Bayaki, and we have two free rerolls. Of course, we only need one wound to take it out, so... Which, that will do very nice. That'll just obliterate the Bayaki. But we do take a sanity on that roll. So the Bayaki is very defeated. And I did forget to... Actually, I did forget to advance Haster. So I just now noticed that we have three symbols out. So Haster advances. Or, okay, so House Rule triggers. Ernest takes a sanity. Yeah. So the Ancient One advances. Al, it was Al's turn, so Al gains a yellow sign. Then we summon, then we set fire where there are cultists and no fire, so fire, fire. And then Al gains a yellow sign. We summon a yellow disciple at the nearest gate to Al, which is the blue gate, and a cultist at each other gate. So another cultist at yellow, and another one at red. Then these will shuffle back in. And then that will be Ernest's turn, so once I get these reshuffled, I will draw a new Mythos card for, for Ernest. Alright, we'll give that a cut. And then here's Al's myth or not Al, Ernest's Mythos card. Monsters in the lab. Each fire vampire and Bayaki moves one space toward you. Alright, so that moves down the stairs. The fire vampire starts to work toward Ernest, which is gonna leave two fire vampires or two fire tokens with Al. Then we summon a fire vampire on yellow, except we can't, and the Bayaki on blue. And that blue gate is now getting... I'm going to try to keep the blue ga the gates visible in shot at all times, but 
That blue gate, as you can see, is getting very crowded. But Ernest gets a discovery card. Ernest finds... Up to no good. The professor, he asked me to help. I'm not in trouble, am I? The student holds a beaker. If you have a guilty conscience, take one stress. You may take two stress to claim the grad, either the grad student or the beaker. If we take the beaker, you may discard this card to deal wounds to all labs and figures, either in your space, including you, or an adjacent space. Each target takes wounds equal to the number of fire tokens in their space, or the grad student gives us two green dice to extinguish a fire. I think we're going to take two stress and claim the grad student, because we're fire's starting to get a little out of control, and I want to try to do something about that. So, two stress to claim the grad student. Which means I want to get something on Ernest's left side, if I can, of his player board. But anyway, with that, that's the end of round two. So let's move back up top and see how the board's changed. That first floor is starting to get very packed, especially this blue gate space. We need to. We definitely need to get some. Start getting some of this fire under control and try to get, and try to get upstairs potentially. But I think our bigger priority is dealing with everything on these two gate spaces. But like I said, we haven't even gotten upstairs yet in this scenario. So hopefully, if we can get Tina moving, if we can get our investigators moving, we might be able to start doing some serious damage. But anyway. That will do it for the round musings. Now let's drop back down to Tina. For action one, Tina is actually going to take the one-handed lab monkey from Fleur, which means her lab notes are now turned on, so she gets two green dice when making any roll because she has an animal companion. Action two, she'll move into the lab over here, so she'll move one two dragging the cultists with her and three she'll also pick up a fire token and then action three she will attack one of the cultists so she's going to get her three black dice a green die for brawling and two green dice for the lab notes because she has a an animal companion with her and hopefully we can annihilate one of these cultists. We very much can annihilate one of the cultists. Too bad we haven't leveled Brawling up yet. But one of the cultists is very defeated. And that will do it for Tina. So we get a Mythos card. We get... Yellow Disciple. Each yellow disciple moves two spaces toward you, and we summon another yellow disciple on yellow. So we get attacked. We'll attack first the cultist with two green dice. We can take one. We can take one wound on that. And then the yellow disciple attacks with three green dice. I'm probably going to have to spend some stress to re-roll so I don't have to take yellow sign tokens. I don't have to take a yellow sign. We will spend a stress to try to re-roll that success off. Okay, so we don't have to take a, any wounds from the Yellow Disciple. We also don't... Which also means we don't have to take a Yellow Sign token. Anyway, that will do it for Tina. Now over to Fleur's turn. Um, we can't attack into that space the Disciple with the Fire Vampire right now. So I think what we'll do... Actually, we can attack something there. We can attack that Yellow Disciple that just spawned. So this one right here. Actually, before we do any of that... Tina's got a roll for fire. I am terrible at remembering this. Um, Tina is going to need to rest, but she can take another wound. 
Now we go into Fleur. So now we're back to attacking that yellow disciple. So we've got the three black dice in already. We'll add two green because of her level two marksman. And we'll see if we can take out that yellow disciple. We, oh my, we obliterate that disciple, but we do take another sanity. Uh, yeah, so the disciple is obliterated. That's action one. Action two, she'll move over here. She doesn't take fire yet because she gets it when she leaves. And then action three, she'll try to finish off... Um, do I want to finish off the fire vampire or... Go after the Bayaki. Mmm. Oh. I think the... I think the Bayaki is actually more dangerous, so I'm going to go after that instead. So we'll get the same rolls, the same dice here. We can attack the... It's hard to see here. We'd have to zoom in pretty far on it, but... There is an arrow right there showing that the two spaces are connected. So actually, we'll kind of position Fleur here, since she's shooting into there. Wow. Um... He... Might as well... I don't want to get her at full stress. Actually... No. I think we'll go ahead and take a stress to try to re-roll one of these. I'll roll a black die. Let's try to do a little more damage. Then we take a sanity instead. But that does put a wound on the Bayaki to hopefully help out with that. But anyway, that's Fleur's three actions. Her Mythos card. Naming the Nameless. Each investigator rolls a black die for each yellow sign token they have. Take one wound for each success and lose one sanity for each tentacle. And it's got our second symbol. So, Al's the only one who's got a yellow sign token right now, which means he's going to have to roll. All right, wound for success, sanity for tentacle. Um, I think he's probably resting this round, so I think we'll have to just eat the wound on that. Anyway, that is our second symbol, so at, so Fleur is actually safe, so she gets a discovery, she finds. A feral student. She only makes vague simian noises. You may take two stress to claim the feral student, except we can't, so we have to claim the guilty conscience. I should have done something. That'll go on the left side of Fleur's investigator card. That'll do it for Fleur. Now we move over to Al, who, as I mentioned, he is going to rest this round. So we're going to rest down to full health. Then I think we will make an attack on the lab, make a roll against the lab. So three black dice. Let's see if we can't flatten this lab. Three successes will go a long way to doing that. And then we'll make another roll against it. Next turn I'll probably have Al work on extinguishing some fire and dealing with some of these enemies. We get one success, which is all we needed to take out the lab. So that's our second lab destroyed. And on the back of this we find... Major explosion. Deal two wounds to all enemies in this and adjacent spaces. Oh, wow. Okay, so all enemies in this and adjacent spaces. Which means... Um... I think... I don't know if this, is, this would actually be considered an adjacent space or not, but that is very helpful because the blue gate just now got a lot less crowded. And I think think it's not connected but it's definitely adjacent so i'm going to rule that this is an adjacent space as well which takes out the fire vampire that is that was a beautiful explosion 
But that, anyway, that's all three of Al's actions. So we get a Mythos card. We find... Lab accident. Each figure in a space of an undestroyed lab takes one wound. That's each figure? Okay, so... The cultists... And Tina take a wound. We have got to get Tina. We've got to have Tina take out those cultists or there's a chance she's just going to bite it. Also, each investigator with a guilty conscience takes takes two stress. Except our only investigator with that is Fleur, but she's at full stress. So she's got to take two wounds instead. Ouch. We are definitely getting busted up. And that's our third symbol. So we're advancing the ancient one again. We're advancing, yeah, we're advancing the ancient one again at the end of a round. But first, we get a discovery card. We get... Medical supplies. Has to be something useful here. You may claim the medicine, and we will. Discard this card to heal all wounds from an investigator in your space, including you. So... We'll get to, heal, we'll get to use that for Al. But then we are advancing the Ancient One, so we'll move him... We'll turn the camera just a little bit so you can see it's a bad angle. I apologize for that. But we'll advance big yellow along the track, which will give Al another yellow sign. So now make some of those Mythos cards even more dangerous. Uh, summon a yellow disciple at the nearest gate, which is the blue gate once again, and then a cultist at the other gates. So Fleur gets a cultist, and we get another cultist up at the red gate. Then we put a fire token in each space that has cultists and no fire. So we put another fire token. Oh, no. I think we're actually clear on that because I think all of our cultist spaces have fire on them right now. So yeah. Last up we have Ernest, and I think we need to send him... I think we might need to send him upstairs, actually. So yeah, I think we'll move him for one, two... And he can't sneak, so he's gonna. But he's gonna pick up a fire on his way through. Action two, he'll attack the fire vampire. Unfortunately, he's in the same space with it, so he can't. He can't roll the extra green dice, but he does get to count elder signs as successes. So we do have three re rolls here, which. We'll use both of them on these two dice. I do need the success. I need to get as much damage on these as I can. Alright, so three damage, and I'll shuffle the... And I'll shuffle the uh, Mythos deck. Actually, I'll shuffle it on right here. Before we take Al's last action which will be another attack on the Fire Vampire. Okay, so yeah, action three for Al, or for Ernest, will be another attack on the Fire Vampire. We just need to, we need to take this thing out. Which we do without any sanity loss, so that's very fortunate. Then our Mythos card for, for Ernest. Lab accident. Each figure in a space with an undestroyed lab takes one wound, which takes all of those out, but it also takes Tina out. And because we haven't summoned Big Yellow yet, so Tina's been defeated, she's dead. Which actually ends the game right on the spot because the Ancient One hasn't come out yet. But anyway, so we have lost. Let's move back up top to wrap this video up. Now the scenario is over, so our house rule about, Hass about speaking Haster's name is no longer in effect. But yeah, that was a much different outcome that we had than we had when we last played this scenario back in October. Where we lost the game because Tina was was killed before Haster came out on the board. So it's I'll turn the camera so you can see 
But we hadn't even gotten to the point where Haster would come out onto the board yet. But anyway, that will do it for this playthrough of Cthulhu Death May Die. Next week, we're going to stay in the Cthulhu Mythos, and we're going to step back into Chaosium's library of Alone Adventures. As cold as it's been during this winter, we're going to see about turning up the heat as we find ourselves alone against the flames. Thank you for watching the video. Please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Be sure to turn on notifications so you get my content. Be well, stay safe, take care of yourselves and your loved ones, and I'll be back with more videos in the future. Until then, take care everyone.